Hi, I'm Pat Kelly. Okay, in this problem, they start us off with a function, f of x, which equals this uh, power series. And they actually ask us to do a lot, so hopefully you're in a comfortable seat, because this is going to take us a little bit of time. Now what I'm going to do is start by um, uh, first finding, they, they give us f of x, i got to find f prime of x, I have to find f double prime of x, and then I also have to find the integral. What they want us to do then is find the interval of convergence for each of these, for all four of these. Okay, so to start, I'm going to go ahead and find the derivative, second derivative, and the integral. Okay, and it's not quite as involved as it might seem because with power series, you have your variable raised to a power, that uh, n power or some expression involving n. But then you just think back to your old differentiation skills, all those shortcuts that we learn, the power rules and whatnot. So for instance, if I'm going to find the derivative here, um, I'm trying to imagine taking the derivative of each individual term. Our infinite series goes on and on and on, but there are plus signs in between, which means you're doing the derivative of each term individually. Okay, so the first thing i got to realize is when you put zero in the start of your series, this just goes to one, right? There's no variable. That's the key. So it's a constant. And the derivative of a constant is zero. So I'm going to start my answer here for the derivative with n equals one. I did that because when n equals zero in the original function, it yielded a constant, and the derivative of a constant is zero, so it's not going to come into play with my infinite series for the derivative. Okay, of course it's going to go up to infinity, all right? But then when I was talking about your old differentiation skills with like the power rule and whatnot, when we go to do the derivative of any individual term here, it's the same thing it always is. Uh, the exponent comes in front, and then the power drops down by one. Okay, and I'll write that down in a second. But I also want to realize that there is this three to the n power in the denominator, but realize that that's a constant. It's a constant factor. It's a coefficient. It's a coefficient of each term. So with differentiation, that doesn't do anything. Right? Your coefficients in differentiation just remain there. So I'm still going to have my 3 raised to the n power in the denominator. But then the rest of it is what I was trying to verbalize where we're doing our power rule. The n comes in front, and then the x that was to the n power now drops down a power. And that's actually my answer then just for what the derivative is as an infinite series. Okay, I'm going to do a similar type of thinking through the other two functions that they wanted for us, f double prime and then also the integral. But then ultimately the answer they want is for each of the four, what is the interval of convergence? Let's get our series and then tackle that interval of convergence. So, with the second derivative, that's just the derivative of the first derivative. I'll end up starting at 2. You know why. First term would be a constant. Okay. Then infinity. All right, that 3 to the n power is still a coefficient, so I'm still going to have 3 to the n power in the denominator. Okay, and I'm still using my power rule here, so... The n minus 1 power comes in front, and I'll actually have n minus 1 times n in the numerator. And then x just drops down a power, so n minus 2. Okay, that's a good answer, if you will. It's a good expression for the infinite series that's going to represent the second derivative. Okay, one more, and then we can do the interval of convergence that they want us to do. Now, when I do my integral, I'm going to go back up to the original and think about our old integration skills. And what I'll start with actually here is a C, the constant of integration, which we usually tack on at the end. You know, you do the integral and you say plus C, but let's get it out of the way before we forget it, because the rest of it then will be an infinite series where, um, again, you know your integration skills. The rest of it will be an infinite series where I have that 3 to the n, that's that constant factor again, it's a coefficient, it doesn't affect your integration, so you will still have a divided by 3 to the n. But when you do integration of x to the n power, you bump up the power and then divide by that number. So I'm going to have x bumped up a power, n plus 1, and then you divide by n plus 1, 
see if I can fit it in here, n plus 1. And there's really nothing up top that I introduced anyway, so I'll put a 1 there. Okay, so these are good answers, if you want to call them that, to what the uh, first derivative, second derivative, and the integral will be as infinite series. And what they actually wanted us to do then was for each of these four series, find the interval of convergence. Let's start working on that. Okay, now what you would have learned in this lesson is that when you do derivatives, second derivatives, as many derivatives as you want, and when you do integrals, you always have the same radius of convergence. So let's first tackle the radius of convergence for really any of the four, but I'll grab the first one, radius of convergence, which you've done problems before with uh, finding the radius of convergence. We're going to go to this expression and uh, look at the limit as n goes to infinity of the n plus 1 term divided by the nth term. So x raised to the n plus 1 divided by 3 raised to the n plus 1. Divide, but it's a fraction, so I'll flip and multiply and get 3 to the n over x to the n. And that's all within absolute value bars. Now we'll simplify a little bit. This equals limits still. n goes to infinity still. Um, n plus 1 factors of x on top, n factors of x in the bottom, so you'll be left with one of them up top, n plus 1 factors of 3, n factors of 3, so you'll be left with one of them in the bottom. We're looking for that as an absolute value. This is one of those cases where uh, we're doing a limit as n goes to infinity, but there are no n's, so this answer is actually just the expression, absolute value of x over 3. Let's actually do the absolute value of 3 here. That's just 3. So that's my answer for the limit. And we do these limits when we're doing a radius of convergence problem because we're doing a ratio test and we want convergence, which means the answer to the limit needs to be less than 1, which means the absolute value of x needs to be less than 3, which means r equals 3. That's the work I had to do just to determine the radius of convergence. And what that now means in terms of finding the interval of convergence is for each of these four, I know the answer is something like minus 3 to 3, right? Radius of 3, we're centered at 0. So I know the answer to each of these four is something like this, but there's that business of, hey, is it uh, open, open, is it closed, open, etc., etc. So we have a bit of work to do to figure out the um, rounded parentheses versus square braces for each of the four. And I'm going to need some space for that. So I'm going to clear the board and really all I need is the fact that three is my radius of convergence and I'm going to keep these series representations of the f, f prime, f double prime in the integral. Okay. Glad you're sitting in a comfortable seat. Stay there, I'll be right back.